Hey, this is Ryan with Goodman Racing, and we're going to talk about shocks and springs versus coilovers. And we're going to kind of cover the features and the differences between both, uh, the pros and cons of each, and most importantly, what you might want to consider for your own vehicle if you're trying to decide between the two. There are a lot of misconceptions that we see when people are talking about the pros and cons of these, so we'll try to set that straight and cover those in this video. Now, talking about coilovers wouldn't be complete if we didn't start with at least covering a bit of semantics. If you're talking to somebody who maybe works more with muscle cars or someone who's a little more old school, if you say coilovers, they may be thinking something a little different than what you're talking about. On a lot of older cars, trucks to this day, etc., you have a shock in one place on the vehicle and you have a spring somewhere else in the suspension system. They are not together. But on a Miata, the spring, the coil, is already over the shock. This is effectively a coil spring on shock assembly. It's a coilover. So Rocky here at Rocky's Miata Motive, anytime somebody comes by and says that they're thinking about putting a coilover on their Miata, he likes to have a little bit of fun and he says, well, all Miatas come with coilovers. And he's right. Um, mostly he's just having fun being ornery. But uh, he is absolutely right. But in the aftermarket world, in the vocabulary used in the aftermarket, this is still a shock and a spring. This is a coilover. Coilover is short of shorthand uh, to refer to a full assembly that replaces the entire shock and spring assembly on your car. Um, so with a coilover, you're getting uh, the shock body, you're getting the spring, the bump stop assembly, all the little hardware, it mounts to the bottom of the, uh, the suspension, and usually it comes with a top hat as well. There are some cases where you're going to reuse a factory top hat, but for the most part, you're looking at a full assembly. Okay, now when we're talking about the features of shocks and springs, the important thing to sort of keep in mind is that these are all interchangeable with the factory parts that are in the suspension already. So this shock can just replace a factory shock and it'll work with the factory springs, or you can replace the factory springs with some aftermarket lowering springs like this, and those can go right on a factory shock. Um, because of that intercompatibility with your factory parts, you can piecemeal this over time. You can do shocks now on factory springs and then upgrade to your progress springs later, um, something like that. The other thing is that as you're shopping for stuff, you are piecing together the parts that you've decided you want to put together as a kit. So these are our popular, very popular Coney Sport Shocks, and these are our Progress Springs. These are our bump stops that we sell on the site. Um, very important to do bump stops when you're doing shocks and springs. If you lower the car at all, then you don't want to use factory length bump stops. Also, the factory bump stops are rubber, and usually, once you've got some miles on the car, they will have worn out, and so they'll actually be harsher than they were when, they were, uh, when the car was new. So bump stops are a good thing uh, to replace at the same time because it's no extra work when you have those out of the car to just put the new bump stops on, whereas you don't want to do it as its own job because you have to remove the entire shock and spring uh, to replace the bump stops. Now on the conies, and this is a feature that does not, uh, it's not available on all conies, but on some of the conies, uh, you will see that there are, and hopefully you can see this, there are additional grooves on the body of the shock. Now, lots of replacement shocks will just have a lower spring perch that is welded to the shock body. And at that point, you're just married to whatever ride height the spring that you choose gives you, that's the ride height that you get. Um, kind of a cool feature with some of the conies is that the perch is removable and there's this C-clip which clips into that groove. So you can pull the C-clip off of the shock body and you can actually move it to one of these other grooves. That effectively means that the shock, uh, I'm sorry, the spring perch will sit lower on the shock body and then that lowers uh, the ride height. Um, we do have, for the generations of Miata that this is available on the Konies, we do have notes about, you know, what those different uh, groove positions will get you in terms of change in ride height. But uh, it, that's kind of a really cool feature because at least you get a little bit of control over your ride height, which you usually don't get when you're dealing with just shocks and springs. Now, when we're talking about coilovers, there's a lot going on here. But ultimately, the main feature that separates a coilover from a replacement shock 
is going to be that the body of the coilover is all threaded. And hopefully you can also see that in the video here. But the reason for that threading is that this bottom uh, cup, which has the lower mounting point uh, that mounts to the suspension, this is threaded inside. So you can loosen this lock collar and this entire cup here will thread up and down on the shock body. Similarly, the lower spring perch is also threaded on the inside. So you can loosen the lower uh, lock collar that's here. And then by hand, you can just turn this entire spring perch and lower it or raise it on the shock body, which both of those effectively change the ride height uh, of the vehicle. And so because you've got this, this long threaded area, you now have a huge range that you can play with uh, to adjust your ride height. Also changing the shock length or the, the entire shock overall length uh, has some other benefits. We won't, it's, it's a little too complicated to get into here, but uh, you can actually set your, your total bump travel and things like that uh, by way of changing your, your overall uh, shock length. And so that infinite adjustability within that range is what you get with a coilover that you don't get with shocks. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that coilovers are always coming with much stiffer springs than your factory springs. Um, there's a huge range of what spring rates they may come with. Each manufacturer picks different rates and uh, you know, it depends on what the coilover is sort of aimed at doing and where it's supposed to be used. Um, you know, it's, if it's a full race setup, then you may be dealing with massively higher rates. If it's something that's supposed to be sort of straddling between track and street use, it may be uh, not too extreme, but it's always gonna be significantly stiffer than factory spring rates. And the key is that the shock then, at least with quality coilovers, the shock is going to be tuned for that spring rate. So whereas a shock that was really designed around working with a factory spring, with that, you can go a little bit stiffer on the spring, but not massively. You can't do four times the stiffness or something like that. The shock won't really work right with that spring. On a coilover, it will. It will work for whatever spring rate uh, it is designed for. And so you have coilovers that have significantly different spring rates than the factory, and it works. It's all designed as a unit to work uh, together. Now, something that we see occasionally, people talk about wanting to do coilovers uh, because it's a whole assembly, and they figure it's gonna be an easier install uh, with a coilover versus a assembly where they have to carry over some factory parts. And that is not the right reason to be deciding between shocks or coilovers. Um, and here's why. With a shock and spring replacement, yes, you're gonna have to take the factory spring and shock out of the car, and you're gonna need a spring compressor, which is a little extra step because you're gonna need to disassemble that assembly and move some of the factory parts over to your new assembly. Um, but don't be afraid of that. If a shock and spring is the right thing for you and how you're using the car, that's just what you need to do. The coilover, while it may seem appealing that, hey, it's, it's a full assembly, top to bottom, um, I don't need to rent that spring uh, compressor to, because I don't have to disassemble my factory spring and shock, um, because I don't have to carry anything over to it. There's a whole separate side of things that come with adjustable coilovers um, that make the install more involved, not less. So the adjustability, the infinite adjustability that you get on a coilover here, this is a double-edged sword. It's a great thing from the perspective of you can dial it in to be exactly what you want, um, and a lot of people are looking for that. But ease of install isn't something that it's trying to accomplish. I have never seen somebody take a coilover, install it on their car, put the car on the ground, and just go, it's perfect. It doesn't happen. We've got three NCs out there, and uh, every one of them, if you put the same coilover on and you set it on the ground, it's going to sit at a slightly different height. And that's for a lot of different reasons, um, different weights between different cars with different configurations, uh, you know, the bushings, different ages on the bushings, they bind a little bit more, a little less. Every car is gonna sit a little differently. You're going to have to take that coilover, install it on the car, put it on the ground, step back, take your measurements of your ride height and go, okay, I, that's, you know, I, I wanna change this by a half inch here and a quarter inch there. You're gonna put it back in the air. You're gonna make some adjustments. You're gonna put it back on the ground. 
you're going to go, okay, that's closer, but it's still not there. You're going to have the car up and down, up and down several times during the installation process. That is just that double-edged sword that comes with a lot of adjustability on a coilover. If you're one of those guys who says, you know what, that's more than I want to deal with. You just want something that you install on the car and put it on the ground and forget about it and just go enjoy the car. Shock and spring might be the right choice for you. Um, on that same note, the adjustable shocks I like to cover. Um, sometimes I hear people echoing that same sentiment. They want something that's just an install and forget it. And they're sort of scared of the adjustable shock that you get with like a Kony, where you can make it stiffer or softer. Um, I try to emphasize to people that that is not a bad thing. It's not quite the same as the adjustable ride height where you really have to sit there and spend time with it and to get it right for your car. With the shock, I usually say set it to the middle, uh, at basically the midpoint in the range um, between stiff and firm, stiff and firm, between stiff, firm and soft, and then go drive it. You drive it one time, you're gonna immediately see what it feels like and you're gonna say, I want it a little stiffer, I want it a little softer, and you can just reach in there, turn that knob, and if you're the type of guy who wants to pick a setting and just forget about it, then you can. You may never have to adjust that shock after day one. Day one, you do a couple of test drives, you find the shock setting that you like, and then you leave it forever. But the cool thing about having the adjustable shock that you don't get with a shock that's not adjustable in that regard, um, is that you can dial it in to your, your taste, your preference. Everybody's you know, got a different version of what's right. It's a lot like exhaust. We always say you know, one guy's version of, ex of too loud is the next guy's version of too quiet. Same with shocks. Uh, one guy's version of too stiff is the next guy's version of too soft. You know, one guy wants his car to feel like a race car and one guy wants something that uh, you know, rides really nice. So having that adjustability lets you dial it in for what you want the car to feel like. So don't be afraid of that adjustment. It's certainly not the Pandora's box that can be the, uh, the adjustable threaded body on a coilover. Now, while we're talking about reasons that one or the other might be the right way to go for you, uh, there's another element to definitely mention. And that is that the coilovers, as I said, always come good bit stiffer on spring rates than your factory setup or than most of your you know, lowering springs are going to be offered in. Now, a coilover is designed for improving the handling of the car and making it corner flatter and dive, nose dive less under braking and all of that. Things that when you're doing performance driving, those are things that you want. Uh, so the, the stiffer spring rates are an important piece to that puzzle. But, uh, it's important to keep in mind that it's very difficult to make a stiff spring ride well. Now, that's not to say that it can't be done. The Olins that I've got right here, this is what we consider the gold standard for ride quality with a performance shock. Olins does a phenomenal job. This is a dual flow valve that actually soaks up harsh hits better than most of the competition. Um, this rides really nicely, and it's surprising that it can ride as well as it does for the spring rates that it comes with. But you kind of get into a trap when you start looking at budget coilovers. And so that brings up a point that I think is really important to cover. And perhaps the largest misconception that we hear all the time goes something like this. We'll be talking with somebody and they'll say, hey, I'm shopping for coilovers. I don't know which ones I should be picking. Can you help? And so we'll always ask, what are you doing with your car? What's your priority? And we do that because how you're using your car dictates what the right tool is for the job. And they'll reply with something like this very often. Well, it's my street car and I have fun in the twisties now and again, but it's my street car. I'm not racing. I'm not going to the track. So I figured a budget coilover is going to do everything that I need. I don't need something super fancy. And while that makes sense on the surface, that's actually completely backwards. And here's why. When you look at a coilover assembly, that's a lot of pieces. And I'm just talking about individual components, not even mentioning the R&D, all the R&D that goes into making a good coilover that all works cohesively. Now, if we're talking about a budget coilover, something in the $1,000 or $1,200 range, this is a lot to try to make for a retail of $250, you know, $1,000 
coilover is four coilovers. So you have to do this entire thing for a retail price of 250. Bottom line is you can't do that and achieve everything that something like the Olin's here achieves. Now, that's not to say that all budget coilovers are bad, but budget coilovers must make compromises somewhere. And usually where we see the greatest compromises being made is in the shock. The quality of the shock, the tuning of the shock, and the shock is the key to ride quality. And so the higher end stuff, while it also performs well on the racetrack better, the big difference is that it's gonna ride a lot better. It's going to be able to handle bumps better. Now, I can go to the racetrack on a budget coilover and I can have fun all day long. At the racetrack, I'm not worried about ride quality. I don't care. Um, if fun is the number one priority, then I can have a blast on a budget coilover. It's a little, you know, it's stiffer, uh, it gets the car lower, and so a lot of those things that you need for just kind of the car not feeling out of place at a racetrack, a budget coilover will be able to deliver that. Have a ball at a racetrack on a budget out coilover. Now, if we're talking about racing, um, some sort of competition, something where lap times matter, then obviously a higher end coilover is going to, again, be what's important because that better shock and the better shock tuning is going to all be able to keep the tire on the ground uh, and connected with the ground better than a lower end shock. But for fun factor, you can have a ton of fun with a budget coilover at a racetrack. But when you take that same budget coilover and you drive onto a regular road, now ride quality is a big you know, priority. Now on the regular street, as I'm going over potholes and railroad tracks and hitting bumps, that is going to be disappointing. And that's where the disappointment of a budget coilover comes in or shows itself the most. So that is why, particularly for a fun street car, we recommend the Olins almost every time. The Olins are the gold, as I said, gold standard for ride quality. These ride really well for having the stiffer spring rates. Now, even that, even the Olins, it should be noted, is not gonna ride like a Cadillac. They do have stiffer spring rates, but I like to draw the analogy that it's, it's kind of like a Porsche. You know, it's firmer, but it's not harsh. And that's the key. The more budget-oriented stuff is going to be harsh. Now, we do have some great budget coilover options, and that's not to say that those may not be the right thing for you. It's just important to understand that there are compromises that are made as you look at different tiers and different price points. So for a street car where ride quality is one of the top concerns, and you also want good handling and all of that, you actually really want to be considering either on the lower end for, uh, for budget, you either want to do the uh, shock and perhaps a mild lowering spring. That will ride beautifully, and there are a lot of combinations of the different perch heights or the different springs that you might pick that might get you the ride height that you want. Um, or you want to skip over the budget coilover block and really be considering something in the upper end because that's going to deliver the ride quality that you're looking for in a streetcar. Now between different generations of Miata, there are various features of different coilovers and what certain parts can give you and which lowering springs are available for that year and, and all of those things. And this video isn't about trying to cover all those different details across the generations. This video is already long enough as it is, um, but that's why we have a contact us page on our website. Uh, we've got our phone and our email there. Give us a ring, shoot us an email. We'll be more than happy to go over your specific car with you, how you're using it, and help you find the right tool for the job so that you can have the most fun with your car possible. So I look forward to talking to you soon and have a great day.